Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. This video today is on a 2004, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mitsubishi uh, Shogun, Shogun, Shogun. Um, it is, um, I believe this is the 3 liter diesel or 3.2, not really sure. Uh, but that's not really important for what, what the problem is. Uh, I'm gonna start the engine. There is this beeping noise. Uh, constant beeping noise that I believe is due to the issue uh, is a little bit annoying but um, I can't really stop it so I think we're gonna have to go through with that beeping noise but I'm gonna start the engine so this is the noise and those lights ABS light there is and brake light that's my problems Okay, and there's an engine light flashing as well, but that's because of another problem. Oh no, it's just gone now. Oh, it's come back again. That light will go off at some point. Uh, but uh, my problem here, I'm so sorry about about this beeping noise. Uh, okay, I think we'll be better to diagnose the car from here. At least we don't have that beeping. So that's the Jeep. Or the Mitsubishi and the problem as you've seen is the ABS and brake lights and uh, I'm kind of um, I'm kind of in the program already so my problem is going to be this HPB uh, which I believe it stands for hydraulic brake booster so these systems will get through there probably because I think I know what the problem is uh, it's a quite common problem on these um, on these uh, models with the HPB unit uh, where there's no brake booster basically the the booster is electric is a motor an electric motor that obviously makes the job sorry about that I just got interrupted but so there's no brake booster as I was saying is an electric motor that builds the pressure uh, and although oh, sorry I pressed the wrong buttons these read codes and my two codes is this accumulator and motor lock so we're going to go now on the engine bay uh, where this uh, HPB unit is and we're going to start with the basics obviously we're going to make sure we have power there uh, we're going to make sure the relays are good uh, and all that stuff but I do strongly believe the problem is going to be the motor is a quite common issue if it is I will take you through but uh, let's going to do a step by step uh, the story with the car is that uh, the, um, everything was working they packed up this um, to get it, I don't know, to sell, I think it was. And uh, sometime later when they went to start the, 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 the Jeep, uh, I do believe that was, I don't know, weeks, months later, I don't know, uh, he came up with a problem. Uh, which leads me to believe that is a problem with the motor. Uh, but we're going to do all the, 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 the basic checks first and then we'll... Uh, we'll go a little bit deeper if we have to We are back here. Just a very quick thing if I delete the codes uh, Deleting the codes doesn't make a difference Because they will come back straight away Okay, so there we go. I can't erase these codes because they can't go away, so we can't delete the codes. Uh, I think it was the same thing I had when I first scanned this. Yeah, so it doesn't go away until I... Uh, I can't really delete these codes. Let me try once more. Yes. There we go. So the engine is not running, so it can't be that the problem. Uh, and it's just because he has faults that they can't. So basically, it doesn't delete the codes because, or it tries to delete them, but because they're still present, it just comes up with that. It's gonna turn this off. Wow, it's really annoying. I really hope this is for the brakes because, you know, it's really annoying this noise. Anyway, let's gonna go on to the engine bay and start to do some checks. And just before we go onto, onto there, 
I've uh, just decided to show you that if I scan my ABS module, that's the fault that comes up with. So it comes up with the fault with the HBB. As you're going to see, if I go back, I hope I don't need to. Okay, so yeah, so I was in there. Uh, that reports a fault with the HBB, and the HBB reports a fault with the motor and the accumulator. So uh, that's my problem. Okay, and uh, this is my um, HBB unit. Uh, it's right here is ABS and HBB unit, so it's only on one. And uh, from uh, these two relays, they belong to here. And basically, there is an accumulator here on this side. Let me show you. So there is an accumulator in there, and there is a pump, electric motor, and pump right underneath that we can't really see it from here and my understanding is that the motor is now running and therefore is now building pressure into the accumulator and therefore is giving the fault for the lock motor probably because it's now detecting the motor running it's giving the fault for the accumulator and on the ABS side of things it's just giving a fault for the HPB so that's what it is um, I think the first thing I'm gonna possibly test um, is gonna be the the relays. Make sure these relays are good. Uh, if we have a relay that is not working, obviously it's gonna cause um, an issue for that. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. It's gonna take these relays out and make sure they are working. And this relay seems to be good. So this one is good. The other one is a slightly different one. So we're going to have to uh, test it slightly different. And as I was saying, this is slightly different. Uh, by um, putting 12 volts onto these two smaller pins, uh, we should close the circuit in between these two big ones. So all I'm going to do really is put 12 volts in here, make sure it clicks. And with the multimeter, just make sure we have current. Uh, we have a closed circuit on these two. Um, I don't. I don't think I need to show you that. It's quite a basic test. So let's gonna do it. Okay, just tested it, and it's all good. So all I've done was this: uh, measuring these two pins here. Apply 12 volts to these two pins. The relay clicks, close the circuit, and that goes down to zero ohms. So it's uh, working fine is working absolutely fine so nothing wrong with this and uh, let me think what we're going to do next okay so I think that what I'm going to do next is actually take this off um, my understanding is that one of these relays will be to power that uh, pump underneath the motor that's going to be um, a motor that's going to draw um, a significant amount of current so uh, one of those relays would definitely uh, in, on my, in my understanding it would power um, the motor and uh, bypassing the relay and just jump the contacts here uh, nothing runs I can't hear any noises so it's like it's, it's, it seems to me that it's completely off the motor so I'm gonna take this air box out to give us a little bit more room the filter housing and we're going to start to take these off. It's no rocket science, just plugs out, take the brake lines. Um, I believe there is a couple bolts on the inside, on the footwell, underneath. And then obviously the the bar, the, the shaft that then is going to connect to this uh, module. So yeah, let's going to start to take things into bits and um, try to see um, what do we get. So. I'll take you through the removing. I've just told you roughly how it is, but it's not rocket science. I never took one off, but it's, it's not going to be very difficult, I think. Um, let's get in there. Let's try to. This goes inside. No, it's no point. Hmm. Let's let let's gonna take this out because otherwise I'm wasting my time. Okay. And uh, what I'm doing now is removing 
some of the oil so we don't lose so much I'm gonna try to empty the tank as much as I can with this uh, little hose unfortunately there's some internal walls on this container that uh, will prevent me from drain everything but we'll drain while we can and we'll go from there really okay I couldn't take everything out but as you can see it is there now but just a little bit at the bottom now we empty everything and now we're gonna start to take all the pipes and then there is four bolts you can see one in there right there at the back uh, the end of my f you see in there there's one that comes through there and there's four I already checked um, and uh, you need to take the pin from the pedal uh, shaft that comes into here and it should come out as soon as we do that but we're gonna disconnect these pipes first I believe it's only four that goes to the wheels and that's it really is these two here and these two here that's it and I'm now taking the last nut it's actually nuts so there's one in there one, one right above then you have two on this side okay one there there's one left I'm taking now the last the last one then you have a pin here and then you push this out to take this uh, shaft that comes from the other side and this should just slide all the way out okay and I'm gonna use this oil change container to put the pump in so any oil will come to here my pump should now be completely loose there we go we should come out just fine just take these pipes out of the way they are here in those brackets okay let's see I'm take this off without there we go just take these pipes here out see if there's anything else I don't think so oh. there we go this pipe see it's getting stuck everywhere get out out oh guys oh dear Oops, sorry about that. There is my unit. It's just these pipes here, they, they get stuck everywhere. It's a little bit of a pain. But as you can see, the pump is out. Now let's go and have a look at this. Okay, and uh, here is my unit. Complete unit. Okay. And uh, here is the motor, and uh, we're going to be able to uh, easily plug or put 12 volt train to the motor and see if it runs from here or not. But I don't think it's going to run, otherwise, it won't be triggering um, a fault. Okay, and I have the battery connected as you're going to be able to see. And uh, this goes straight into my motor, so putting 12 volts here, it should force my motor to run. But when I put it, look, it doesn't even take any load. So our motor is indeed gone. And let's gonna take it out. Okay, and two bolts later. Uh, there's only two bolts really. There is one right here and one in the bottom then it just split this so this obviously is what goes inside to pump the, the, um, the oil this is my motor that as we have just seen is now running so let's gonna see what's wrong with this motor if we can salvage this or if we're gonna need to get another one I don't think I'm gonna look away it's coming out look at this Oh dear, look at this crap. I doubt this motor is any good. 
and this is you can't really see it it's completely gone look there right there as I twist as I turn look there's nothing there all the copper is gone over there in that area look look at that it's gone the brushes anyway they are really really low and uh, bearings are fine so I wouldn't think that that would be a problem but this is gone completely it's nothing it's nothing we can do about it it's completely gone yeah I think it's gonna have to be a new motor yeah guys unfortunately it's, it's gone and I think the only way is gonna be really it's gonna be a new motor um, so that's it really so I'm gonna have to get a new motor see if I find one price etc etc and uh, and hopefully I don't need to get an entire unit because that would be probably quite expensive so yeah that's where we are at the moment and if you are suffering of this problem most likely that's a culprit okay guys and this is like a week later maybe yeah about a week um, why uh, where to start and why we are on the shed uh, on the workshop sorry uh, we are on the workshop because we're gonna have to do some soldering uh, mainly because uh, well I'll take you through as we go along but that's gonna go uh, in, in, a, in a kind of uh, 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 an order that makes sense so I got the parts uh, I didn't find these parts uh, in the UK guys so the motor itself as you probably uh, remember so a lot of these uh, inductor plates here as you can see as you come around they are missing so they just worn out until they start to get out look at that you see so this is what happened so obviously this inductor is is gone uh, inductors on the UK so these parts on the UK forget about it I've looked everywhere and I could not find them uh, motors I found the motor so all these so the motor all assembled obviously I found a second hand motor for about 300 and I'm gonna repeat 300 pounds and that was a second hand motor uh, Ah, would I spend 300 pounds on a motor that most likely uh, would be in the way to suffer from the same problem? I don't think so. Um, then I found the entire uh, HBB unit, so the entire thing, whether the, um, whether the block assembly, the ABA, everything. Uh, 400, 500, around there. Uh, once again second hand same problem I found brand new ones about 700 pounds 800 pounds that's a little bit of money so I had to look for a cheaper uh, alternative which I found uh, I found them on eBay though uh, but the guys uh, I got where I got this from I haven't, I haven't opened the box yet so it's gonna be I hope is the right things in here uh, this is a company in uh, Italy uh, call them tech and they sell they sell the motor they sell the entire motor I didn't go the entire motor because I had the motor into bits and I wanted to save a little bit more so I'm going to show you exactly what I got and let's see if they send everything I've asked for plastic cardboard plastic cardboard there he is okay Yes, they did send. Okay, so to a pair of uh, brushes, as you can see, brand new brushes. And uh, in here, in this other box, should be, oh, when it comes with the bearings. Lovely. Look at that. 
Yes, look at that. Um, it's not brand new. These inductors, uh, they are uh, reconditioned, but uh, but it's a brand new one. So that's all I need to know. Uh, well, all I need to know is make sure it works. But this is a reconditioned uh, inductor. So if you buy uh, this, um, if you buy the motor, it comes all assembled. If you buy just this, it's a little bit cheaper. It's about half price. Uh, and obviously you just need to do everything I've did um, now There's another thing with the, the inductor which is and that's why we are here because we're gonna have to do some soldering and One of the soldering points is here where the brush is attached So when the brush is original uh, put in there Where is the, the brush? So I'm gonna show you and then I think I'm just gonna do it and show you the result so the way this is done originally is this is put underneath there. It's put underneath there. Okay. Like that. Underneath there. And then this is pressed and spot welded at the same time. Now I don't have how to spot weld. So you can guess I'm going to solder. Another place is where this goes in here. If you do remember, goes somewhere here, I think. This goes in there, and then that goes in here. And these two prongs, they go through. And once again, they were spot welded in there. Okay, I can't spot weld, so we're going to solder this. And that's the main reason why I'm going to assemble the motor uh, back here. So I can do all this spot welding uh, while I'm here uh, and all that stuff. We're going to put everything back together. I'm so happy that it came with new bearings. That's absolutely spot on. Uh, at some point I thought I would have to take the bearings. These bearings, they still okay, the old ones. But it comes with the new ones, which is, well, it's, it's even better. So, yeah, let's going to start to put things uh, back on and then we'll try this uh, in the end. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is put the brushes uh, on this sort of assembler here uh, actually I'm not going to put the brush now well I can solder the brushes but I'm not going to put them in yet uh, because that's going to have to be one of the last things to do before we put the cover on uh, so we don't need to push them back so because of the the rotor and all that stuff so I think I I'm going to put something together and then I'll show you Okay, one thing I want to take you through here is the new brushes. Uh, when I put them on these um, slots here, they are really tight, look. Look, they, look, look here, they are actually... Look, can you see there? You see, they don't slide freely. Look, it just doesn't come back. So, what I'm going to do, I've done on the other one. I'm going to show you, I don't want to damage too much. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, using a little bit of sandpaper, just going to sand a little bit on the side, just a little bit, a bit of the bottom, these corners, a little bit on this side, let's see, and look at that, see the difference now, look, Okay, so just something that I think is worth to mention just in case if you think they are supposed to be tight They are not they are supposed to run freely back and forwards uh, So they keep contact um, To the rotor um, at all times. Otherwise it will not work. So this is done now I'm gonna uh, solder the brushes uh, in place Okay, and there it is. I think you can see it Okay, and now we're gonna slide the brush in there and now all you need is the spring at the back close it but we that's probably that's only done after uh, the rotor and all these in place so we're going to put the other one do exactly the same and that's it for now okay so this is now in place as you can see i haven't put the springs yet or closed these little doors at the back uh, because we need to put the rotor first before we push 
these uh, brushes but I've put these in so this is my next oh come on now the rubber stayed in there uh, so this is my next thing okay uh, so this just goes in there like that and you push it all the way and now I'm going to solder this in here because I can't spot weld as I've mentioned many times already so we're going to solder this and then uh, we'll carry on and there it is okay solder it's not going to move now let's going to carry on assembly this motor okay so I'm just inspecting the new uh, inductor and one of the things I've noticed is that this top bearing uh, the old one sits a little bit lower than this one as you can see the difference right here at the top and the gap between the inductor plates and the bearing but it's something that I believe that as soon as I put this in place and start to put the bolts that will push the bearing back into place uh, so I'm not worried with that and this bearing here the same thing as you can see it sits down a little bit lower this one but I think that will go everything will go in place when we have the cover in place and we start to compress everything that should push the bearings uh, to uh, where they should go. So not to worry about it. Uh, these bearings, they are not supposed to be uh, lubricated. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm going to put no here. Because I don't want any grease here between the bearing and the body. I'm going to put a little bit here on the inside. Uh, don't even know why, but I'm going to put a little bit. So right here on this edge on the inside. So right here at the top. A little bit before we slide the bearing back in. Don't really know if it's going to protect. Uh, well, it, it will sit over there, so it's going to prevent some corrosion in there. Because this edge of the bearing is going to sit right there. So that's where that, going to grease, that grease is going to touch. <coughs> so uh, now there is a thing, because at the bottom of this body, we need to put this and this is magnetic and it's going to pull oh dear it's going to pull the thing away it's not going to be easy to place that in there well radio <laughs> it's going to be funny to put this in there you have this sort of spring wobbling washer that's supposed to go right there in the middle to keep pressing uh, this is the old one but that doesn't matter which is seats in there to make some pressure on the bearing but this is magnetic so every time I put it in it just goes away let me see if I find a way to put this right at the bottom aha there it is so once you put it there it just kind of stays in there so that's done uh, on this bearing at the back I'm also gonna cover with grease that will help a little bit so we're gonna do this Okay, now nah, here because we don't need the bearing to turn against the body, just in the middle. And I think I'm going to put this bottom first and then we'll put these at the... No, I need to put that one first, sorry. Because then I need to put the springs and the thingies, so let's go to place that in there. Is. Okay, there's one thing that I've noticed, which is, yeah, so as you can see, when they change these uh, rotor plates when they bent this here is uh, look just look here that is covering a little bit of this top of this bottom of the plate these ones they are just flush because these ones are like that they touch the top they touch this here 
So I'm going to have to file a little bit either that or that to prevent this. Um, but I think I'm going to needle file this a little bit here, right here at the top. Uh, yeah, how am I going to do that? Okay, guys, and uh, it's now in place. Uh, spot on. Uh, just in case of some of you are wondering, uh, this uh, blue tack sort of is not really is a hard plastic. There's some in there and some here. This is to balance the the inductor. Okay. Originally, that, this is just curiosity. Originally, what they do is they grind the these areas here to balance it. Uh, these ones they are balanced in a slightly different way but yeah so I have the springs here now so we're going to put the springs in there push them in close this and then we should be able to put the cover on okay guys another thing that I need to show you and in this case it's just it just happened but as I started to uh, obviously as I've opened this to take the springs then now close it again. This right here at the bottom is start to crack. And these became really, really weak. This one is not too bad. Uh, nevertheless, I've soldered here at the bottom, as you can see. This corner here. The other one is just split completely. So I had to do these guys. I had to put it back. And then I had to use this sort of bit of copper from here. All the way down to the corner. And then I solder right here. To hold these little, these little hand plate in place, so now it's not going to go nowhere. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on this side, just so to make sure it's not going to obviously open. And uh, but yeah, just something I thought it would worth to mention. Okay, and all in place, as you can see. When you put these two parts together, don't forget the seal. There's a seal. It's not this one, obviously, but there's a, 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 a similar, different similar different seal as you can see in there that goes here don't forget that um, I've done the electrical connection here as well and I think it's time to try the time for the truth it's gonna turn my power supply on is on 12 volts that's gonna make sure we are not shorting nothing here I don't know how it's gonna kick but it's gonna see if it works Hang on. 12 volts. Do I have this connected or not? I think it's better if I do it like this. Oh yeah. Can you hear it? I don't know if you can hear it. I'm sure you can. Let me, oh, come on. Let me do it like this, so you have the pleasure to see the shaft here spinning. Look at that! Let me try the opposite way. Although the motor will only turn one way, obviously. And it's working! Lovely! Okay, I think we got it done. Uh, all we need to do now is assemble this back onto my HBB unit. And the hardest job here is going to be bleed the brakes. We're going to have to bleed all the brakes again. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think, I think this is pretty much the job. Uh, that's going to put all back together now. I will take you a little bit through that as well. Uh, and uh, and yeah. It seems that we have a working motor now. So let's going to put it back. Okay, uh, let's going to put this back now. Um, I gave a good clean to this so it looks like new. But obviously it's not. And this goes right there. Okay. Don't forget, you need to put this thing here 
and once again don't forget the seal there it goes like that and this goes like this Uh, I need to take this bracket off anyway. So, I need to take this bracket because this bracket needs to go at the same time. Then, put this in there. Well, it's not rocket size. Um, uh, before I put this in here, I'm going to put probably a bit of grease in here just to keep this lubricated and kind of corrosion free. But other than that, uh, that's it. I'm going to use a little bit of copper grease, uh, not normal grease, because I, I want the grease to be able to stand some heat. Uh, put everything back on and then just put it back on the car, really. And here it is, all back in place now, as you can see. Okay, and now it's just put the unit back on. And uh, well, I think I've showed you how to take it off. So put it back on, it's just the reverse. Uh, there is four bolts inside that holds against the firewall, uh, the pin that holds into the brake pedal and the electrical connections on the outside the hydraulic connections for the brakes uh, here and here and all that stuff this little rubber I keep taking it out let's put it back on uh, so yeah we're gonna put everything back on and uh, need to put this rubber here I'll put it here uh, so yeah put this back on and then uh, leave the brakes and go from there and hopefully we'll have our problem fixed just so you don't think I haven't put the rubber back on, there it is. This is the kind of uh, rubber that covers this breather here, so back in place now. Okay, and that's in place. It's filled with fluid pretty much to the maximum. And uh, we're gonna plug the maxi sys and see uh, what we have now. Um, obviously we still need to bleed the brakes. But I do strongly believe uh, this should be enough to get rid of my fault. Um, unless the pump is not going to build the pressure yet because it's not bleeded. But uh, we're going to try. So I'm going to plug the maxi assist and the ignition on. And see what happens. Okay, the maxi assist is plugged in. But uh, before I turn the ignition on, I want you to follow this with me. Because I haven't turned it on yet, believe me or not. So. Oh, I can hear the motor. I can hear the motor. Look. I don't know if you can hear the motor going. I can definitely hear the motor. But obviously it's not building the pressure. It should build the pressure to a certain point and stop. But I can hear the motor running, which obviously should get rid of our fault. But let's gonna go step by step. Uh, I don't want to run uh, dry. So let me see if the level dropped because the pump was running. Uh, no, my level is pretty much no. He actually dropped a little bit. He actually dropped. He was right up to the maximum. He dropped a little bit now. So shall I keep it running a little bit longer or? Maybe run it for a little bit longer. I just don't want to run nothing dry and oh we stopped now good that's a good sign that uh, beep if you remember it stopped now so that beep that continuously continuously beep was actually because of the brakes so that stopped now and I'm pretty much sure that okay um I could pretty much sure that if I start the engine, my engine, my uh, my light will go off. Ah, oh, there we go. Airbag light is off. Uh, look at that. So I have the brake, obviously, because I have the brake on. But uh, yeah, look at that. 
ready i'm just going to deliver the car now hey <laughs> no we still need to bleed the brakes obviously that's important uh, but just curiosity we're going to go in there make sure uh, our fault is got our fault is gone which obviously it is but we're gonna we're gonna go through anyway okay this is the only place to get rid of the the glare so let's gonna scan my abs module my sorry uh, hbb unit And as the scan starts, I get all these lights flashing, blah, 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 blah. Let's kind of read the codes. So, accumulator, motor relay, motor lock, uh, pressure switch. Uh, if you do remember, I think I've done that at the start. If you delete this, they used to come back straight away. The accumulator, I think it was. Or motor lock, something like that. It's gonna codes have been su successfully erased. It's gonna read the codes again. Hopefully, we'll have no codes. There we go. Now, it was another module, if I'm not mistaken, that used to give me some codes, which was the ABS, I think it was. Let's see why it says now. Rick codes. Valve relay off, maybe. I don't know if it was that the code. It's just gonna clear this. It's gonna read my codes again. No codes, escape. Uh, was there any other modules uh, with faults for for that? I don't think it was anything else. I think it was only these two. It's gonna come. Actually, control unit. Do I have a bleeding uh, facility on this uh, module? Let me have a look. See if we do have. If we do have, that's going to be good. Active tests, maybe, no. Pump motor, buzzer, no. Um, on ABS module. Sorry about that. Live data, active tests air bleed front air bleed front right why there's only front right air bleed fr1 air, air bleed fr right front right front rear left one rear left unless this is all the same unless it bleeds front and left at the same time it'll be weird but let me see oh now it's the only thing you have this is your first menu so i think i'm gonna have to bleed this manually or try to use that function anyway that's gonna uh, get this bleed going because otherwise we'll be here forever Okay, uh, here we are on the first wheel front right uh, ready to uh, bleed the brake um, So we're gonna take this dust cap and I'm gonna show you on the first one or I'm gonna take just through a few tips on this I'm not gonna show you how to bleed surely you guys know how to do it um, Obviously we're gonna put a little bit of uh, WD-40 just to help out, not really sure if it's going to help, but uh, one thing that I always do uh, on this is I never use, and as I was saying, I never use a multi point socket, I always use one of these X uh, sockets because there's less chance that it's going to slip. So, 
There we go, and is loose. And now, oops, we'll be using one of these little hoses into this tray. And we're gonna bleed the brakes. Uh, I'm gonna try to use the maxi seals to help me out, see if that works. If not, we're gonna have to use it by pump the brake to wall four, and then I will come back. Okay, and I just got I uh, just got home from a drive test, uh, and uh, it's braking absolutely spot on, no problems at all. Uh, all our lights are gone, as you can see, and uh, we have ABS. Everything is back on. Everything is running as it should. The brakes are braking absolutely fine. We had to bleed all the brakes, obviously, as I've mentioned uh, earlier, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, job done, problem solved. Um, hope there's some information here, guys. The main thing on this is getting the motor, the road, the inductor, whichever way you decide to go. That's the hard bit to get, uh, but yeah. Guys, hope there's some information here on this video that you can take further, that you think is, is, is useful. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do still have any comments, any questions, please guys put them below. And like always, Thank you so much for, for watching.